I think this is close to Registan Square where a bunch of girls just like uh, shouted I love you <laughs> and I was like very happy <laughs> Hi, I'm Raksha and this is my husband Monty. Uh, I spent about two weeks in Uzbekistan and Monty joined me at the end of the trip and we spent about a week together. So in this video, we are talking about our experience traveling in Uzbekistan, what we liked and what we didn't. So let's get started. First question. Yeah. So what surprised you the most about Uzbekistan? I think uh, Tashkent as a city was surprising. Yeah, it is surprising. The infrastructure they have, the roads, yeah. the like eight lane roads, and then right in the middle of the city center. City also. center, yeah, <laughs> and you can you know walk as well. There's like pavement, and then yeah. it, it has a lot of uh, a bit of Europe vibes. You know, like you can yeah. sit outside for yeah. the cafes and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all those kind of things were like really... Uh, uh, because nice. it was also part of the Soviet Union before, yeah. <coughs> the roads are like really good in Tashkent. And that's not something that you expect, I think in Uzbekistan you would expect it to be underdeveloped. Right. But when you're there, you realize like these are actually very well developed, like roads and even transport. Transport, yeah. Yeah, so we went by trains between the cities and they were like really good and comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so for me, I think... Uh, Something that surprised me was the tourist police, like you see these tourist police everywhere in uh, Uzbekistan in the major Silk Road cities and they're mostly for uh, tourist safety purposes. So you can see that people, uh, the government is actually taking initiatives to make sure that Uzbekistan is safe for tourists, which is really good. And as a, when I was traveling there as well as a solo female traveler and with my husband, I think it was like really friendly locals, right? Like they were <laughs> so nice yeah. and welcoming. So so you don't feel unsafe when you're there. Yeah. Also, one more thing surprised me was um, the celebrity feel you get <laughs> yeah. for just being an Indian. People want to take pictures of you, and yeah. uh, you know they they want to talk to you. They want to come and then ask you questions, which is very interesting. Yeah, <laughs> they're so crazy about Bollywood. Like yeah. the Bollywood fandom is insane. Yeah. Uh, especially the older generations, they're fond of like uh, Mithun Chakraborty, Amitabh Bachchan, yeah. Raj Kapoor, Rishi Kapoor, yeah. and the newer generation, of course, like Shah Rukh Khan. And they are like so crazy, like they want to take a picture with you <laughs> everywhere yeah. when they see you, when they find out that you're an Indian. Yeah, yeah which is insane. Nada. Subscribe. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Rakhwa. Rakhwa, <laughs> Getting new subscribers <laughs> in Uzbekistan. <laughs> the rowing heart. <laughs> Rakhwa, bye. So this kind of we covered already. So we had many encounters with locals when we when we were in Uzbekistan. So which one was your favorite? Which one was my favorite? I remember one. Okay, tell me. That would be your top memorable one. Mm. Uh, I remember that time when you went alone in uh, Samarkand. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, of course. For me, yeah. Apart from that, I think a lot of people have asked for pictures and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, that was a little... Unique. What was that? Can you tell? <laughs> So bunch of women. I think this is close to uh, Rajasthan. Yeah. Bunch of girls. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think this is close to Registan Square where a bunch of girls just like uh, shouted I love you <laughs> and I was like very happy. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Did they know that you're from India? Yeah, yeah. They asked me first like uh, yeah, Indusan. Like they Indusan, asked usually yeah. from... <laughs> If you are from Hindustan and yeah, I said yes and then while leaving they just shouted. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good encounter. They are so friendly. Yeah, people yeah. are so friendly. There were women in like Rajasthan Square and they wanted to take pictures with me and they would give me flying kisses. Uh, it's insane. Like people are like so warm and welcoming. Since you consider yourself as a big foodie, <laughs> what is your favorite Uzbek food? It's, it's uh, Shashlik of course. Uh, because that's pretty famous there. Uh, apart from that, I like the pilaf and tea. Tea was really good. Mm. Yeah, Uzbek tea. Uzbek tea. <laughs> and even the other uh, 
fruity that you get there that's also oh good. yeah the fruity was really good yeah. that's something that we tried for the first time and yeah. it's actually was uh, so good yeah. <laughs> was not expecting that for me i think uh, i like the melons there they were like so yeah. juicy yeah. this so good like the best melons that i've tasted definitely they were re- really amazing something you should try when you are in uzbekistan yeah with watermelon and musk melon oh like yeah really and so watermelons were like very huge massive they yeah. were at least three times bigger than the watermelons yeah. we find in india yeah, that's super true. heavy yeah. yeah couldn't carry one from the yeah, yeah we actually were planning to buy one from the supermarket and then cut yeah. it ourselves but oh, it was so hard to carry yeah. next question um, so since you did not really travel to many places just tashkent and samarkand which one did you like better uh, i'd say uh, samarkand was a little bit more interesting yeah. there are a lot of history and a uh, lot of monuments to see and look around yeah true so yeah i would go with samarkand yeah, yeah. okay yeah uh, so when when i was initially in tashkent as well i was like okay this seems like a city uh, i did not find it so exciting for me but when i went to samarkand uh, there were like interesting uh, in important historical monuments there were like really massive and so colorful and uh, the tile work is like really amazing like iconic structures these are so yeah th- that was interesting but then again when i was in samarkand i realized that it doesn't feel like an old town like there's like it, the city is well developed and when you're walking around there you don't feel like you're in a silk road city so i think i felt that in bukhara so i like bukhara i would say bukhara was uh, something that i enjoyed uh spending time in in uzbekistan so what is your favorite architecture in uzbekistan architecture oh uh, i think it is the of course samarkand uh, registan registan square. square yeah that's <laughs> very beautiful and uh, for me i think uh, in uh, of course apart from registan square i like the uh, shahis in the as well mm. there's like a lot of mausoleum complexes and they're like right. so intricately done it's really uh, worth visiting True. and also bukhara in terms of it being a open air museum so it was like more exciting for me right any funny moments that you want to add funny moments can't think of any funny moments right now mm, do you think I- i'll talk about mine when we had to withdraw money right like we had to keep it in our bags you cannot keep those money in the wallet because it's so oh, yeah. much <laughs> <laughs> like we would withdraw like what like million uh, uzbekistan som which is like uh, 8000 rupees like 100 dollars and sometimes we would withdraw like 2 million if we had to like shop or you know something else and you would get it in like this bunch of uh, notes so you cannot even like keep it in your wallet you have to carry a bag with you which is really funny mm-hmm. so there was this uh, one instance in uh, samarkand so actually i was staying in a guest house uh, with a local family in samarkand and uh, the host is like he was asking me questions so most of the locals that i meet uh, this is how the format of the questions go where are you from and when i say hindustan and then the next question would be uh, do you have a husband so when i say i have a husband the next question would be how many children not like do you have children <laughs> but how many children you know yeah. it was so surprising to me that uh, people ask these questions and sometimes you know wherever you go in the world you realize the some of the questions remain the same <laughs> never changes yeah i know but i think at least here people would ask if you have children not directly go to how many children <laughs> yeah so that was interesting <laughs> i think there was one instance around the same we went to an indian restaurant in uh, tashkent tashkent and yeah. there the guy asked the same question the waiter uh-huh. um, how many uh, kids do you have and i said oh no no kids uh, i read that no kids by the way <laughs> this is no okay <laughs> in uh, uzbekistan so i said no kids uh, kids are a lot headache i said and then he will oh no 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 you can't say that <laughs> like cool <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, like the thing is there is a language gap definitely yeah. when you are traveling in uzbekistan so most of the times it's all about body language yeah. or if you learn a few words then you try to interact with them with those few words so yeah that is uh, that's funny so on that topic uh, which words did you learn in uzbekistan or uzbek or russian uh i think yeah a lot of russian words uh i think uh, you taught me a few hello um, what does hello mean 
I I don't remember all that. Strastutia. Ah, Strastutia. Yeah. Yes. Um, Hello, no. Strastutia. Niat, right? Niat. Yeah, Niat means no. No. Yeah. yeah. I, or you can do this. So that <laughs> means no. So we say no, or we say no. That's not no. There. This is no. Yeah. Da da means yes. Da, Niat yeah. means no. Yeah. Yeah. Skolka. Skolka means how much. How much. So these are all Russian words. Yeah. So when you're buying something, you can yeah. ask how much. Das vidanya. Das vidanya, of course. Yeah. Goodbye. Yeah. So I was actually trying to pick up new words, and when he was there, he was trying to understand what is written. <laughs> so yeah. then, actually, I ended up learning because of him, like what what these Russian words are. So trying to translate them into English. So yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. And once I came back, I had a bit of issue reading English because <laughs> I was again trying to convert all of the you know Russian words like. N is an H yeah. and things like that. When I was in Central Asia, you were here in India. I used to call you, and then I would say the the the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> it just comes up. naturally. Yeah, like yeah, I up. forgot about saying yes yeah. because that's what you normally use. Yeah. I don't know what I was saying yes to, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to be honest. But yeah, I was like telling the to him. Like it was funny. Any worst experiences that you had in Uzbekistan? No, can't think of any. No, we had one actually. We booked the train ticket, and mm. in the train, I mean, while booking, it showed you that those are window yeah, seats. Yeah, window seats. Yeah. But the seating arrangement itself was different once we entered yeah. the coach. It was a little confusing, actually. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't say the worst experience, yeah. but it was uh, surprising. Surprising, yeah. yeah. Probably they have like a generic uh, booking system, and then. the train gets that gets assigned might be different so mm. maybe that's the case yeah. mm. for me i think uh, i wouldn't say the worst experience but oh uh, in bukhara it was so hot like <laughs> so hot i cannot imagine like i would go out in the evening at 7 pm thinking okay it's going to be pleasant this is like a good time to go outside till then i wouldn't be uh, like in the morning i would go but the whole day i would be inside the room yeah. and then i go out at 7 pm and it's so hot like you could feel that hot air against your face against your skin your ear so it it's insane so definitely don't go during summers uh, to uzbekistan especially not like bukhara or kiva it's oh uh, it you can get sick it's that kind of hot mm. Yeah, yeah, but in Tashkent, I think when we went later, yeah, in September, I think it was much better the weather wise. So next question: uh, What challenges did you face in Uzbekistan? Communication, uh, yeah. little bit. Um, so they don't uh, understand English, so we have to continuously use Google Translate. Yeah, and uh, sometimes they can't even. Um, understand i mean it's it's hard to pronounce what uh, the russian is so you need to convert it yeah. and show it to them and then they will type it and then we need yeah, to see yeah 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 so yeah that was the i think yeah but then we also ended up learning uh, russian uh, because oh, of it so yes. it was, that was pretty interesting for us because we were yeah. constantly learning uh, because you don't have any other option right so True. you end up learning quite quite quickly so i think we picked up a lot of especially you picked up a lot of uh, A written thing you could actually yeah. convert it into yeah. English. Yeah, yeah. After a while, I could read donor, yeah. donor kebabs. <laughs> donor kebabs, yeah. yeah. So every time you would see donor, we would be like, oh, we know this. <laughs> yeah. That was pretty cool. Uh, I think for me, uh, like, it was hard to find vegetarian food. Mm. So that was a problem. Like in the tourist areas, you will easily get it because uh, they also cater to. all kind of tourists right so you'll find vegetarian food there but in other places if you go outside if you are going to like local restaurants you may not find much options right. like, except for like a uh, salad or soup or something right. so that is a little hard and i think it's okay it's manageable uh, if you are there for like two weeks because i was there in uh, central asia for like two and a half months and this is like a whole meat eating uh, region so it was a little challenging for me but i would still say that uzbekistan is so much better than tajikistan tajikistan was like the worst experience <laughs> for me <laughs> when it came to vegetarian food right yeah but uh, it was fine i think yeah i think i think in uzbekistan there were a couple of places where they even made 
the meal vegetarian for you right yeah yeah so, so if you ask them to yeah. not put meat in it they can do that bez miasa so that is the word you need to know bez yeah. miasa which means without meat in russian yeah. and that's where that was my anthem pretty much like everywhere i went to i would say bez miasa and they would get it yeah. so yeah that's how i got vegetarian food in most places like sometimes you don't really have any vegetarian food but then you try to ask them to make the same food without meat yeah. so yeah. yeah and they are kind enough to yeah. do that they they accommodate they accommodate it. It. Yeah. Yeah. and you can also use this app called as happy cow app so that has a list of restaurants where you can find vegetarian vegan food so which is very handy especially when you're traveling in this yeah. region <laughs> so would you visit uzbekistan again yeah sure uh, there are a lot of places i haven't been to there still yeah. i just went to samarkand and tashkent and tashkent is also a big city yeah. so uh, i don't think we explored whole yeah, lot of tashkent yeah. either so we just stayed in one side and then yeah, we were just, just going around yeah, there and mostly there. i think we were focusing on food at that time yeah <laughs> that's yeah, all i cared about <laughs> because that true. was the end of the trip and i wanted good food yeah. at that time yeah that's it yeah fine yeah. so <laughs> would you travel with me again no <laughs> why, why bye <laughs> <laughs> why not Uh, I don't know. You asked me to take a lot of pictures, so. <laughs> but I also take my own pictures so that I don't oh, bother you as thank much. Thank God, yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> but yeah, I had no clue about uh, Uzbekistan, uh, and you know, I wanted to go to that region, and he kind of joined me. He definitely wouldn't have gone to that region in his life otherwise, and he enjoyed it actually. That, yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. I wouldn't have gone to those regions if not for you. But mm. yeah, it's nice. It it was a nice experience. Yeah. yeah. Thanks to me. You have a lot to be get grateful for. Yeah. Well, I paid for it and everything <laughs> for my tickets and everything. So I don't know what to thank you about. Yeah. I introduced you to a different culture. So. Okay, fine. If you say so. Mm. Yeah. That's it. Thank you for watching and if you have any questions let me know in the comments below. Yeah. She'll be answering that not me. <laughs> Bye. Bye.